Welcome! This week we're going to go over lessons 21 through 24. So grab your manual. Let's get going. So last week we did a lot of work with doubles. Your child may need more work with that and it's okay because guess what? This week in the warm-up they're going to have more opportunity to work with their doubles. And again you have that fifth day. So let's see what materials are needed this week. You'll need the abacus, the tiles, the dry erase board, the math card game book, along with the basic number deck, your worksheets, tangrams. You only need one set of tangrams. This is a new item, so we'll talk more about that when we get to it in the lessons. Scissors and construction paper. Now the construction paper is optional. You'll see that in the lesson book, and we'll talk more when we get to it in the lesson also. All right, so let's start with lesson 21, applying the commutative property. In the warm-up, there's a lot of different activities. Again, it's dependent on if your child needs to do them or not. There is a section in here about doing the doubles. Notice it says to use the math name as well as the regular names. So go through, do the math way of saying it, go through and do the regular way. I stress, please, make sure you're having your children do the math way. And I know they may not like it. Some of them don't. My granddaughter struggles with it a little bit because it's just not what she's used to. But I promise you, just from experience, it is amazing how it helps them when they get into doing police value. So looking in your manual, there's nothing here that I'm going to show you other than I just want to encourage you. So what we're doing with the commutative property is helping the child understand and see that you can have one plus five, it's the same as five plus one. And that's the whole point of doing the stairs. This is just another way to reinforce and help the child understand that the equation is still the same, no matter what number you put first, whether it's eight and one or a one and eight. And the game is go to the dump. And it also tells you to use those stairs for this game to help, again, reinforce with your child. The in conclusion has a story problem. I want to recommend that you personalize it. Make this, use names in here that your children are familiar with or change the activity to something that you know that they'll like. It just makes the story problems a little bit more fun and it helps kids to really relate. Lesson 22 is solving add two problems. Now I didn't put in the manipulatives that you needed the whole part circle set. That is totally up to you. That is something you could do if you have it in a page protector or you have two of them. But if not, you can draw these on the drawing board. Notice that this is a little bit different in that the worksheet is at the beginning of the lessons and it asks for the child to read the story problems. You may have a child who can read just fine, let them read. You may have a child who struggles and if they want to try reading, go ahead and let them try. But it's okay if you have to read the story problems to your child. I know with my youngest son, it took him a long time to be able to read well. He's dyslexic. And so I read a lot to him and he just answered orally. And that was fine. Sometimes I even wrote in the answers for him because that's just where he was at. As they're using their part whole circle and they're reading the story problems, this is where they have to determine if the numbers are the part or if they are the whole. So if your child's reading this or you're reading it to your child and they are not sure, don't tell them the answer. Ask other questions if you need to. I'm going to read to you number 13 from some general thoughts on mathematics that's at the front of the book. Number 13 says that the role of the teacher is to encourage thinking by asking questions, not giving the answer. Once you give the answer, the thinking usually stops. And I have found that to be so true. There's something a little awkward with silence, or maybe we feel like our children should be grasping it faster. Like we have our own time frame, and then we expect our children to adapt to that time frame. 
we need to stop. We need to allow them to think and struggle a little bit. Now, struggling to the point of tears and frustration and throwing a tantrum, no, no, that's a meltdown. We don't want to do that. But it's okay to let them sit silently to think through it. My children got so used to me answering that I think it got to a point where when I would ask a question, they knew that if they just stayed silent, I'd answer it for them. It wasn't actually until I started using Right Start that I realized, oh my gosh, I am horrible about giving my children the answer. So I want to encourage you guys, silence. Let them process through it. And then if they still aren't getting it, ask them, would you like me to help? And if they say yes, then ask them questions to get them to think about what they're doing. So here's an example. So here is the part whole circle set. And I'll do one of these questions. It says that Jacob saw two butterflies on flowers. Some more butterflies landed on the flower. Now he sees eight butterflies. How many butterflies landed on the flower? If you have a child that's unsure how to fill this in, ask them, would you like some help? And if they say yes, don't tell them what to write in there. Go back, reread this over again, and then let's break it down and ask some questions. How many butterflies did Jacob see on a flower? Well, he saw two. All right, well, let's think about that. He saw two butterflies on a flower. Some more butterflies came and landed on the flower. So was two all the butterflies he saw, or were there more butterflies? And hopefully your child's going to say, no, there is more. Well, then is two part? Was it just some of the butterflies he saw? or is to all the butterflies that he saw? Two, because some more came. So we're gonna enter two. <clears throat> and then it says, well, now he sees eight butterflies on the flower. Is that all the butterflies he sees on that flower right now? I mean, some more could come later, but for right now, because you know what? I have those literal children or those children who are going to say, but, but it's like, no, no, let's deal with that. At this moment in this story, he sees eight butterflies. So is eight our whole or is eight our part? And hopefully they're going to realize it's the whole. So then they get to put the eight up here. Because what's the question? The question is how many butterflies landed on the flower? And now they have, he has to, or she has to figure it out because they have two. We know there was a total of eight. If you need, the child can use their abacus. How many was all on the flower? There were eight. So let's find our eight. Now there were two and then some more came to join. So there were two and then some more came to join. How many came and joined? Six. And so they can write six. Then we want them to write the equation on their worksheet and to underline the answer. So the equation is going to look like, I'll write this at the bottom, 2 plus 6 equals 8. And then we underline it because that is the answer. Does it matter if they're filling in the parts, if it goes in this one or if it goes in this one? No, it doesn't. Because they're also learning about the commutative property. So we know that if this adds to this, it's the same as this added to this. So it doesn't matter. Let them put the part in whichever side they want to, as long as it is a part. So in conclusion, it's asking for the child, for you to ask the child to make up a problem for you to answer. And, you know, depending on your child, if they're like super smart and they just really get this, 
maybe you'll answer wrong and see if they notice. Now, if you have children that are just struggling and they're still really trying to grasp this, you probably don't do that. That wouldn't be good to do right now. And also know that in future lessons during the warm up, they'll have more opportunity to do this kind of story problem with the whole part circle. Lesson 23 is quadrilaterals. That's a big name. But guess what? We're going to break it down and your children are going to learn what it means. And some of you are going to be reminded of what it means. This is a lesson that's really focused on geometry type concepts. And it's done purposefully. You've been working on the doubles, you've been working on the commutative property, you've been doing some story problems. Now it's time for the brain to kind of take a break from that. It's amazing how our brain works. And so when we get new information, sometimes we just have to take a day and just two days or whatever and do something different to give time for that brain to just be able to absorb that information. So, there is going to be some things in warm up. Again, if your child needs these things in warm up, do them. If you feel your child doesn't need it, that's fine. Don't do it. Just go on into the lesson. So you'll be working with parallel lines and then you're going to start working with the quadrilaterals. Now you're just going to draw some pictures as shown in the manual. You're going to explain to your child that this is a quadrilateral, but don't say anything else. All right. Just let them see these pictures. Let them think about what they are. Then you have some other pictures that you're going to draw, and these are not quadrilaterals. So your child is going to look at some pictures that are quadrilaterals, they're going to look at some that are not. And then at the top of the second page, there is a question that you're going to ask your child, and you want to help guide them to discuss what is the difference between those that are quadrilaterals and those that aren't. We want them to discover it, not just tell them what it is. There's something about discovering things that helps you to understand it a lot better than just when someone tells you something. In this lesson, we're going to use the tangrams. This is the first time that this material is being used. These Tangrams come in seven pieces. You may remember what a tangram is, but if not, it's seven pieces. And if you work them all together, you can make a big square with them, but you can make all sorts of shapes. So notice we have the two triangles, the big ones, a medium size, a little one, and then we have the square and a parallelogram. And then you're gonna give your child the tangrams and you're gonna ask them to put the pieces together to make four sides. But they have to use two or three tangrams. They can't just use one tangram. They have to combine. So for some children, that might be easy. They're going to do it quickly. For others, it might be a little bit more challenging. Again, don't tell them. But maybe you could come in and move one piece. Like they have two pieces. You put one together and then give them the third piece and say, can you see how this would fit on with it? So there's some different ways you could try it. And for those of you whose children may take a little bit longer to figure this out, you can leave those 10 grams out in a special spot during the day. And then maybe if there's extra time, you could ask your child to go and see if they could figure out what they could do to make a quadrilateral. Or maybe you don't say anything, you just leave them out and then maybe they come by and they rearrange it. I don't know, there's just some different ways you could do this if you have a child that's still a little bit struggling on getting those pieces together. I know that that's something that I struggle with myself personally. I have some visual tracking problems of some sort. I don't know, I was never formally tested, but I will let you know that working with tangrams and this kind of shapes, oh my gosh, it can be a little bit challenging. So just know you may have some children like that too. Last lesson for this week, lesson 24, building rectangles. That's not the only thing we're gonna do. Notice in the warm up, there's a new version of the game comes after. You're going to include more numbers, not just one or two. The rectangle page is in the appendix. 
It's appendix three. Now I've already cut all, out some rectangles. This is one of those things that you could either cut out yourself, you can make an extra copy or two and then ask your child to cut them out. Just helps with those fine motor skills. And that's why you need maybe some extra copies because some kids don't have the best motor skills. Anyway, this is really cool. I just got done doing this with my granddaughter recently. So you cut out like this column and you're going to number it one, two, three, four, and five. Then you give this to your child and you ask them to build rectangles. And you're going to talk about some of the different shapes in here with your child too. And when you ask them to do the rectangles, they can't just put one because you say, I want you to use three. I want you to use three to make rectangles. It may take them a little while to figure it out. I would plan on at least probably three to four minutes for them to have that time to work this out. And just like I've been saying all along, some of your children are going to boom in 30 seconds, they'll be done. And some of your children at the end of that three minutes or four minutes, they're going to still be like, I don't know. <laughs> so don't tell them. But you could always say, all right, if you have to use three, why don't we start with this one? And then can you find two others? that if you put them to the side it will equal it will be the same as this one the same height and then they'll have to figure it out and when they get it right it's pretty cool so here let me see if i can do this while i'm holding it up so here we have our five And then this would slide in right in here. Do you guys see something on this? A little pattern? That's what I thought was so cool. So these two, when added together, equal this one. And look, you could have done it this way. How cool is that? Three and two, five. I just thought this was so fun when I was doing it with my granddaughter. So this is where the construction paper comes in. This is optional. I had my granddaughter do it and I thought it was pretty cool. And she seemed to enjoy it also. I had her where she put three together to make the rectangle. Then she had to do four and then she had to see if she could figure out all five and combine them. But what's cool is once she understood that pattern, you know, of how the four and the one make five, it wasn't too hard for her then to figure out what she could put over here to use all five of them. We finished up another four lessons. I look forward to seeing you next week. I hope this week is great. I hope you have fun with your children. Enjoy these lessons. Enjoy this time with your kids. And next week, we'll go over lessons 25 through 28. Until then.